office chairs. Most of us sit down in one every day, whether it's from Staples, Herman Miller, or some gaming chair company, each one is about as bland and boring as the next. Now hear me out for a second. Off-road vehicles get bigger tires than regular cars, right? They need to drive over sticks and logs and rocks and all that. On the other hand, office chairs get small wheels because they just need to scoot around the office floor. However, in my personal experience, my office chairs actually need to run over all sorts of things. Charging cords and headphone cables and copious amounts of drill bits and random scrap lumber. You know, everyday stuff that's on the studio floor all the time. Running over a cable with an office chair can actually really damage the cable, but running it over with, say, a car tire, it'd be totally fine. So why don't we just get something closer to a car tire. So I used to work at a Harbor Freight and I've always wanted an excuse to buy these giant caster wheels they have. And now I have one. See, there's all these reasonably sized options, but I want to go with something stupid. Eight inch pneumatic. There's only one though. We got four casters. I was lucky they had some extra in the back. Now that I have my wheels, I just need some wood for them to mount to. The best wood is always free wood. So we're using pallets. And that's a couple free boards. So this is the chair I'm gonna modify, partially because when I threw it from like six feet in the air, all of the wheels broke. This thing had five wheels originally. I'm gonna go with four because squares are easier to build and each of those wheels was $16. I want my wheels tapped into something nice and strong. So I made these mounting plates out of a scrap two by six. I'm not sure why I decided to drill these holes on my rug, but that's why God made vacuum cleaners. So after filming those clips, my saw actually broke and I had to do some shenanigans to get the old batteries to fit with the new one. I did another video on that. So anyway, let's, let's put this thing to use. This is my punctuation tool. Once the wheels all have appropriate mounting points, I just need a frame for the chair to actually sit on. So it's time to make use of that pallet wood. Okay, so this little skateboard that we've built is actually pretty cool, but the thing is tall. Even at the lowest height of the chair, if I set it right on top, it's gonna be like a really tall chair. This thing looks stupid. So let's come up with a solution. Inside this square frame, our chair is gonna sit with its little post in the middle. The big problem to figure out is how do I mount that bare metal post to this wood frame? I can't tap screws into the post because it's basically a giant hydraulic piston. My first idea was not particularly great. The plan would be to keep the original legs attached to the post, but cut them real short. I could tap into that plastic with a wood structure and connect that up to the main frame. But what I didn't anticipate is that the wheels actually take up a lot of space in the middle, depending on which way they're angled. So there's not a lot of space down here to drop the chair in. So unfortunately, this mess of a design is way too big and whenever the chair turns, the wheels will hit it. My second idea, on the other hand, seemed pretty good, or more accurately, just less bad. I'll get a pipe of a slightly larger diameter that the post can drop into, and then just mount up a couple simple metal brackets off of that. The wheels will have full clearance because the design is barely bigger than the post itself. Overall, this design is going to be way simpler, way easier to build. I'm just hoping it'll be strong enough to actually function. So with the plan in order, I just had to measure my post diameter and head off to Home Depot. I got myself some two inch PVC pipe with the appropriate end cap and some tape for spacing and brackets. I also picked up a single T-joint. I had an idea that might make this whole thing way more sturdy. All right, so uh, I should have all the materials I need now to finish this up. That's one way to disassemble a chair. So what was the idea I had with the T-joint? Well, I thought of this in the hardware store. Instead of just screwing in brackets, I could mount arms on a T-joint and cut a hole for the post to come through. The whole seat and post assembly would just drop in and sit on that cap.
Okay, so we're making good progress here, but I've run into an issue. This thing runs into this little knob. And if I'm gonna have support arms coming out of these joints, that's gonna be a big issue. The chair just isn't gonna be able to spin all the way around. Um, my other issue is that this thing looks rather phallic. So I think what this little knob does is you can tighten or loosen how much the chair can recline back. I am gonna pull this whole thing off, just put a bolt through it, and hopefully the chair will just be fixed and it won't rock anymore. I think I'm gonna paint this thing too so my chair doesn't have a giant dangling schlong. I cut some PVC tubing down the middle to make these arms so they'd have a flat mounting surface. This should be a lot more sturdy than if I were just using four brackets screwed in on the sides. Speaking of the brackets, this is what I'll be putting on the other two sides. It's a little janky because I don't have much depth I can tap into with the screws. If they went all the way through the metal, the whole hydraulic post would just stop working. Now I think the better way to do this would be weld brackets directly onto the post, but learning how to weld is a little out of the scope of this project for me. I'll tackle that soon though. This thing is actually looking really cool now. It's like almost a chair at this point. I could sit on this. Now at the start of this video, I was coming up with a bunch of reasons to make this sound like a utilitarian thing, running over cables and all that. But in seeing this thing come to life, I'm realizing what the point of this project actually was. While the idea that started this whole thing was born out of utility, at some point the execution was just fueled by the pursuit of ridiculousness. My office chair is an object that's always going to be floating around the middle of the studio, so I want to have an appropriately rugged and weird looking chair to match the rest of the space. This whole thing isn't about making the best chair, the most functional chair. You know, I, I cut a lot of corners on this project. For instance, staining everything after assembly or using the corner brackets I did instead of proper reinforced braces, or painting those brackets without masking them. Getting too bogged down in the details is the antithesis of a project like this. I've never done this before, and neither has anybody else probably. I don't know if using a set of casters rated for 1,100 pounds on a chair is a good idea or not. The only objective improvement I've made to this chair is reupholstering it. I replaced the old worn out spacer mesh with a nice top grain leather. At this point, I don't even know if the thing is gonna be functional, if it'll support my weight at all. But with all the individual pieces finished, it's time to reassemble the thing and find out. Okay, it's time to test how this thing does. Feels like it rolls well enough. Yeah, that's like usable, that's a chair. Now here's the big thing. How does it do? in the lumber runover test. For control, our regular office chair. Doesn't even roll over pallet wood versus this thing. Don't have to do anything special. I just glide over effortlessly. <laughs> That's actually cool. Okay, so here's the real test. Two by sixes. I don't expect it to do well here, but I'll give it a shot. Didn't make it. I think I just have to distribute my weight correctly and I can actually make it over these. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Technically a win. Pretty solid. Certainly way cooler than this thing. And I can run over my headphone cables now without needing to worry about damaging them. Perfect. To take this back to the car analogy from the start, I feel that indulging in projects like this is similar to the motivation behind having off-roaders and sports cars. People who don't get it are like, why do you need a car that goes 180 if the speed limit is only 70? Well, it's not always about the actual utility of a thing. Sometimes it's just cool to have something ridiculous. So that's why I really built a monster truck office chair. For an object I'm gonna interact with literally hours every day, why wouldn't I want it to be fun? 